one and zero. Yeah, but if you do that really fast, you can get some really interesting <laughs> things. Yeah, that's what I want to hear you say. Yeah. That's great. Okay, because I'm more into the spherical thing, and it's, you know, just let it go. Yeah, And let yeah. randomness take over. Uh-huh. Okay. Instead of have you, have you started this? No. Yeah, we're rolling. We're rolling already? Uh -huh. Okay, then we're just going to do some preliminary right. stuff. But the, the whole randomness of the ball and everything, and obviously being more into pinball than video games, mm -hmm. I would think that let that be. Don't control that. Oh, but I would say it's carefully controlled and designed. I mean, that was my main interest in, in like, making the... Sorry, it, that, my main interest in, in um, looking into pinballs, uh, yeah. uh, pinball machines, mm -hmm. is because uh, they're not random. They're designed. Like, someone had to decide what uh, pieces would be uh, going in which places, where the ball might end up, how, yeah. and like just the trajectories of things. And someone with a very a good a sense of, of what might happen uh, was carefully designing that Agreed. experience. Agreed that is. the play field layout has to be thought out mathematically almost. Yeah. But once you apply that sphere to it, doesn't it? There's a randomness aspect to it, but it's it's in a controlled right. environment, right? How does that differ from video game context and framework? Right. Um, there's a lot of comparisons because the the the, that randomness that you uh, speak of, when you're talking basically about like Newtonian physics, like yeah. what's going to happen to the ball when it's when it's affected by a force. Yes. Um, you don't get the same in most video games. You don't have that same actual physical uh, randomness, but you do have a randomness that you can apply using code. So you can g ask the code to give you something that is unpredictable. It doesn't. Uh, to a human, so maybe the computer yeah. can predict it, of okay. course, but but a human being would never be able to just uh, predict what was going to happen, mm -hmm. and and you can or you can just literally use something that's like a dice roll that that is intentionally picking uh, any range of things, and and the you, know, it, you it might seem that it's since it's digital, it's fully predicted, but if you're asking for the purposes of, of the game, you're simply asking the computer to act as a randomizing element, okay. then... To, to generate a factor that's going to affect the game, and sure. that the human being is going to see as random. Right, exactly. Okay. But it's not random. Well, it, now you're getting really philosophical. Well, that's my degree. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, you could say that in the same way, you know, Newtonian physics is predictable. So it's not entirely random either. Like if you apply this force in this way, you can probably have a formula that can tell you that you know, this other thing would happen. If you had as uh, like perfect knowledge, yeah. it would not be random, right? Right. right. So um, I, I, from what I've researched and from what I've learned is that the the, uh, the whole randomness aspect of coding and of computers works with certain. Uh, algorithms mm -hmm. that try to imitate basically right. randomness, and I've seen. I, 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 it's because there's a there's a website. There's a there's a guy that offers a true random service online, mm -hmm. and what the way that what I read the way that his thing works is that it works with a, a atmospheric noise oh, and okay. microphones that mm -hmm. pick up on that. All right. And he what he did was he graphed. Um, a uh, an image with pixels that represented uh, a number. Let's say from let's say the 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 image. I, don't, I can't remember exactly how many pixels there was. Well, there was, but let's say there's about fifty thousand pixels. Each pixel is attributed an address, a number, and then it, it he asked uh, different computer programs that do randomness to pick. Uh, let's say 25,000 numbers from 1 to 50,000 mm -hmm. and had, had that graphed on there and you can see that it's not entirely random, that there's some patterns, that there's a shape there's, to there are certain, certain pixels are never selected mm -hmm. and certain pixels are more likely to be selected, whereas with his uh, It uh, came out setup, pure noise, it, it I It came out like pure noise, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there were you could not discern any 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 pattern, nothing uh, recognizable, mm -hmm. nothing that we so could. In that it. sense, do you think maybe we just haven't yet developed something that's fully random, on uh, like on a, a through code or through 
or like what are your thoughts on, on well, I, I guess not being a mathematician or in fact a programmer I'm a designer and I'm working with designing systems and I might use a, a randomness but I'm not actually the one who's building the randomness yeah. into it um, I can only imagine that what what you would do for uh, something like a digital game is as long as you have enough randomness if that make, makes any sense like you don't necessarily need perfect randomness yeah. for, in any given situation, but as long as it's unpredictable enough to a human being. And I mean, we're not talking about, in most cases, most cases, um, like betting simulations where, it, where we are very heavily invested in, the, in this idea that it's random. We're talking about something that's for entertainment purposes. So mm -hmm. as long as the outcome is sufficiently unpredictable and you don't notice some yeah. kind of weird pattern of, uh, you know, behavior, it then it's fine. And there's also, that's also re applying only to a subset of games. Many games, I, I mean, well, of course, like if you, I'd say the, the most basic element of, of randomness for most games would be if you can move around in them, the, the player is not really able to entirely predict all the things that could happen to them, even though the system would understand exactly what happens in any case, but the human might not perceive it. Like, you know, mm -hmm. if you use a classic example, like, you know, how far Mario is going to jump, you can't, like, see a little trajectory, although maybe some people can. <laughs> That's how they're so good at it. The, 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 one of the, the formulas that pinball designers use when they design a table is to balance the skill versus, well, not versus, the, the skill and the luck element to be properly balanced to make a good right. pinball machine. Yeah. Uh, in the 70s, they, they started leaning more towards the skill, which would mean the predictability. The player was able to say, if I shoot up that lane, I'm going to hit that switch, and I'm going to come back this way. Mm -hmm. The 50s weren't like that. The pinballs in the 50s were more luck. There was more luck because they were used for gambling. Right. And when the gambling element left pinball, they started pushing up the skill element. How do you see skill and luck balanced in video games? This, mm -hmm. this is a question I'm always thinking about. Right. So it so seems to be more skill than anything else. I think it, that it's more on a game by game basis. Okay. So, so you see a lot more randomness uh, in games when it's something that's a, a simulation where where the player is maybe building a universe and and the game is then playing out what the the outcomes of your choices would be, uh, and and so that it's not completely. Um, well, the word, I guess, predictable, but uh, just so that you have some element of surprise, it, you have an input, and then the game is, is giving you some kind of, of unknown output that you can then deal with, because part of the pleasure of the game is, oh, here's a scenario, how do I act, what's going to happen in this, in this uh, situation, how can I adapt to these circumstances and, and uh, succeed at whatever I'm attempting to do, whereas other games are more... Uh, Here's a puzzle of a sense, like that that has been fully, completely designed, and the designer, whoever made it, knows exactly what's going to happen, and you, it's your job uh, as the player to simply to solve it. And you might fail because you don't know like what to do, but then you eventually you do exactly what you need to do. And so there's a certain other pleasure in that. So those are two different things that I'd say game designers, digital game designers, can use, um, and then just understanding what's what's fun, what's pleasurable about that for the human, the player, is, is what you then try to emphasize. What would you prefer out of those two sort of scenarios? I oh, would, I, I don't know. Reckon, I would reckon the one that's not a puzzle. Well, no, I like puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, but, but yeah, because yeah, you know, puzzles, yeah, they make you feel smart. Yeah, uh, also, uh, there's also sometimes bl a blend of both where, right. mm -hmm. where you have a game that's developed you know, with with some uh, where you explore, you know, with some mm -hmm. uh, uh, randomness aspect to right. it, where it has puzzles inside the game, like mm -hmm. included in the game. Those yeah. are also very. Well, yeah. I've seen a lot of those. Well, I'm using puzzle in a very large sense, so not only like I don't know, moving around little pieces to fit a picture or something like that. I'm talking really more like, like problem solving. Problem solving that is a problem that was was. Through, through designed, as you might, you know, it's kind of like through composed music. It's through designed puzzle, without any kind of aleatory quality. So, um, but there's also because uh, games are are integrating a lot of storytelling. 
Uh, not always, not exclusively, but when, when you do have some sort of narrative arc that you're trying to, to develop, it's very challenging to have a randomness element in a story type of, of situation because mm -hmm. exactly. it, you, the story needs to you need to understand, the, the designer needs to know that the player will reach a certain point and then, uh, then the next point and that it's, that it's going in a, a certain progression. So there's a lot of experiments that, that are going on about how can you make, uh, take a linear story and make it non-linear, make it possible that you have choices but then you still have an emotional resonance because that's the main thing. She's a little off center. So I'm gonna move the camera. Wait, Heather, you like this position here? Yeah, I'm You're fine. Comfortable? Yeah, although okay. I might you, you know, know I'd like I'd like to I don't want her center. She's not I am not gonna touch this before you look at it, but I thought she was a little bit off to the right. It's fine. I mean it gives it a feel that It seems the emphasis is more on the plants than on Heather, so. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> yeah, I'm afraid if I moved any it, it further works, right, I will be. I just wanted to um, cut it when she she was starting a new topic, yeah. mm -hmm. so we can take over from the linear part. Mm -hmm. If you want to talk from that point on, or should we start something? Maybe linear? feed me Whatever. a new. Uh, We're freestyling it. We just have to make sure that we uh, we get her to. Uh, state her name. Yeah, we're gonna start with oh, that. Yeah, let's go a little bit more chronological. Yeah, let's go back. Over the place. back That's okay though. In the editing, yeah, yeah. In, I know the magic of editing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to hide this. Like, oh. Yeah. Okay. Over there. okay. You can control it. Just okay. hit the yellow button whenever whenever we need to have. Yeah. Some, yeah, some cool some air. So which professor is this? Because all these books were in my courses. Really? Like. Each. Okay. Well, like there's one-dimensional man. I remember, you know, Jesus, all these things that I read, they were assigned reading. <laughs> they, they might be, yeah. In fact, a lot of them. Okay, so there's two people that live here. One of them is a professor, and the other is a translator from German to English. Okay. So that's maybe why there's so many what do they great teach? books. What does the professor? Um, the same program I'm, I was okay. teaching in computation arts. So okay. it's, but it's you know philosophy, critical theory, philosophy. Yeah. Art, com Good. computation, all of those things, and it's actually half and half. So, like okay. the left yeah, half is hers, switch. and the right <laughs> half is his, his and hers bookshelf, and, okay. and so yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now that I'm not distracted anymore. Okay. It's very. I know. Yeah. As a book lover, it's like. It's yeah. Mm -hmm. It's something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Heather, your your mm -hmm. formal training, I guess, would be where right. to start. Right. Oh, uh, we'll start with. You know, like that. your name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, who am I? Everybody knows who you are. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my name's Heather Kelly, and uh, I'm a many things. I'm many things: a game designer, researcher, artist, um, curator. Um, I'll, I, I'm also teaching and starting a professorship in January at Carnegie Mellon. Um, and my form.